Entrepreneurs and Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I am, as always, your host with, host with the most, Seth. Um, today, I have Rupa Gupta. He is the chief bottle washer, the head honcho, the brains behind mtap.io, which is a business card networking. I'll, I'll have him explain it. It, it is... A business card on steroids, essentially, is what it is. You walk around, you can tap your card to people's phones, exchange data. It's really neat. He's also the CEO of Hurotech, which is, helps startups get build out their products and their MVPs and all that. He's a serial entrepreneur, and he has got an MBA from Columbia, and he's also helping out with, with their startups over there. He believes building technology that brings people together enables authentic connections. How's it going, buddy? Maybe maybe you can explain, give it a little bit more pizzazz about MTAP a little bit. Because I, I kind of sure, think like so. a business card on steroids, which it is, but it's more than that. It is, definitely, yes. So you yeah. put it set. So first of all, thank you for having me on your podcast. It's I love an honor. Yeah. And uh, it is so wonderful to know you and all the things you oh. do. So thank you for everything sets that you do. And well, My head's blowing up. My head's it. getting big. My head's getting big. Ah. So you bring everyone together, and that's what MTAP also does. But yes. before I tell about MTAP, right, I'll ask, I'll tell you a story of how it was born. Yeah. So it was born from a pain and from a trigger. So, but pain was not the trigger. So my pain was meeting people and so many of them. And when you come back, doing that follow up, either it won't happen. And if it happens, it happens to about 20 or 30% of the people because either the business card, paper cards were lost or they were lost in my contact form. So there was not a proper way of how I can reach out to a people mm -hmm. after every networking event. And during COVID especially, a mm -hmm. lot of people were reaching out over the phone and over Zoom. So all of a sudden, what you have to share exactly. changed. The medium changed and that was a problem. But the trigger of MTAP happened when I was just cleaning up my desk and I was throwing out a lot of paper out of it. And those paper was coming from my visits from conferences and all the pamphlets and the goodies that you have that you see. And my daughter, she, Rhea, she is a big enthusiast around environment. And she's like, dad, you are into digital technologies. Why don't you just figure out a way that we don't have to print and throw all of this paper? Yeah. And that was the trigger to actually start thinking of a solution to reduce paper. And that thought emerged as magic marketing. I love which it. Which later on was renamed and rebranded to MTAP Magic Tap. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's magic. It's magical. I mean, when people see this and they're like, it's just like when, when you used to be able to tap your phone and people are like, whoa, tap your phone and pay for something. That's now kind of become ubiquitous. Now, soon enough, these business cards that are you tap to give people information are going to be ubiquitous. And so what sets MTAP apart from all the other plethora of Instagram-esque tap cards? Yeah. Because <laughs> so, they're all over the damn place. It's all over the place, right? So you will find so many technologies that are just tapping it and putting it through. Yeah. And that's where the key difference between a contact and the connections came up. Yeah. So when I was trying to go around and I was tapping it out, I still realized I have not resolved my very basic problem of doing the follow-ups because mm -hmm. I still had to do those follow-ups. I still had to go in and do all of those activities. Yeah. And I was not sure. And now you had to find the damn contact in information in the process too. Yeah. So we were losing a lot of contact information. So how do you resolve that? Mm -hmm. And then we came back and used my knowledge on the software industry side to actually mm -hmm. create a software of doing connections. Love and it. then I started calling up people in sales, people yeah. in retail, coaches, 
that what are their problems in managing, doing the follow-ups and making, converting a contact into connections. That's wild. In yeah. sales, everyone said you have to have six touch points before a contact will be able, becomes a connection and mm -hmm. gets with you and knows you. Can we enable that using the new technology? And that was the quest yeah. I was after uh, for the last 16 months. It's only and been 16 months, I know, it's kind of wild. Yeah, it's flown by. And, and uh, what led to it now, as of today, you can actually enter a contact information in MTAP Hub. And uh, MTAP Hub is going to send out an email. If, for example, if I add you, it will send out an email. Yeah. So till today, the, you will be receiving the email and you will have no control. As of today, you can actually review the email that is being sent out. I just hooked you. it up before our call. I just hooked just it up. <laughs> so now you can actually review the email and you are gonna get it. You yeah. can also have shared notes. So if I add notes about you, you will receive those notes too. Oh, so don't, don't call a guy a schmuck in the notes because yeah. he'll see it. Absolutely. And you can have <laughs> personal notes. You can Which tag a contact. Yeah. Yes. And then you can actually tag a contact, segregate them. When I was talking to people and giving out talks, I realized a lot of small business owners don't have the concept of segmenting the contacts that they are meeting. Mm -hmm. And by group that so they we, met them at or where they met them at, at locations. Yeah. And I mean, I love that because I can actually go back and say, oh, I met these guys. I met these guys. They use my MTAP card. Absolutely. I then met them at this event. I can go back and tag them. You know, the tags come through. It's great. So that way you have a memory. The other person has a memory. So yeah. what happens now? The follow-ups are happening even before I sit down the next day to write someone. Because now the other person has a text message and an email with your information. Mm -hmm. More than likely, they will get back to you if there was some uh, common interest. Or they'll say, hey, I was going to be meeting you too. And you know you get the right email address. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least you get that now, much. I, I've seen that when I yeah. use your card that um people well at least right yeah great being you too yeah yeah and then came up a uh, feedback because we are very big at collecting feedback people yeah. started asking the email that goes out from mtap at mtap.io can it go out through my own personal email i love it and he said okay we went on that quest and now we are integrated with google I love it. That's, that's what I did this morning. I integrated. I have to play with it now, but you know. So now, all the e whenever you um, either scan a paper card or you enter your contact manually, you will be able to get an email generated from your own personal email account. Which means it's more personal. It doesn't get stuck in spam boxes as much, and it's just like yes, I like more that. deliverability, more personalization. And that's what differentiates us. It is, yeah. it is not the product. It's the process. No, they're, they're dime a dozen. I mean, it. Really what it is, is it's an NFC chip on a piece of paper or a piece of metal that has yeah. content information on it. Oh, and there's a QR code that has the information. It's a V card, essentially. Not special. It's the sauce that goes around the basic stuff. And the constant striving to make sure that it is the best solution for you and it mm -hmm. becomes your personal connection point, a yeah. hub where all your contacts are there. I love it. And yeah, it's fantastic. To, and they integrate the to Salesforce and Zoho. I know you're working on Zapier at some point. So yes. it, uh, not only those integrations, Seth, what we are working towards is we are trying to make it give you as much productivity as we can. So yeah. when I am meeting with people, I want to make sure that if they give me their contact information, today, only the bigger enterprises can get the lead enrichment. Yeah. So if, you're, if you receive just the name and the email of a person, in about January of 2024, we are releasing a feature where you can buy it for $10 a month as oh. an add-on. And every contact that you add, we will give their LinkedIn profile, which business they belong to, what are their skills. You'll and fill in stuff. You will yeah. have all that information in your system, which usually only bigger enterprises have. Yeah, which makes sense. The bigger enterprises need it first. They're going to break it and tell you what you need to fix it for. 
get it done yeah, that nice. way, then it releases to the wild. It makes perfect sense. And for 10 bucks a month, that's not bad at all. And so that we are introducing many AIs. The, as a roadmap, we are also coming up with a matchmaking. I have more than 5,000 contacts in my system. Yeah. How do you prioritize those contacts? When I was doing one of the leadership professors, uh, I think Paul Ingram mentioned it out yeah. that every end of the year, you should go and create, curate the contacts which are more important for you for the next year based on where yeah. you, what the outlook is. A little ABM and you should follow yeah. them and grow with them. I'm bringing that concept in a tool so that all of us can use it without knowing the concept. I love it. I think it's fantastic. So let's go back to let's go back to the, so the whole thing is you went to college in India, then you came, then you came into the you know over in America. Well, you worked over there for a while at some corporations, and you came over to America. You worked in some more comp- corporations. You started up here at Tech, but you also worked at Johnson Johnson. I mean, you've been inside the big dogs, you've been inside the smaller dogs, poor dogs. <laughs> But the idea is that like you've done the corporate grind, and oh, yeah. you know, uh, and you and you're oh yeah like you know it's it, you know it's a grind. I mean it's like whose butt do you kiss on what day exactly? It's a different grind. I'll say whether you talk of a corporate grind or you talk of a startup, both are grind. Totally but yeah, uh, what do you want? It depends on person. My wife, she loves the corporate structure. She thrives wow. in that. She's with Microsoft and she just cannot understand why are you in a startup and literally <laughs> grinding yourself for 18 hours a day with all the stress, not knowing when the paycheck is coming. But that's exactly what I had to decide last year, whether yeah. to lo- lose my, whether to give up my corporate job and yeah. lose all the security, the financial security and that you're really having after more there maybe. anyhow. So it's like, what are you putting up with, you know? Yeah, and then go into a roller coaster ride. But I have been a person who likes to create things. Yeah. I built my first robot, not the robot, but actual robot, uh, yeah. in eighth standard, way back in mid of 1980s. Oh. Late 1980s. And then when we were not even aware about Roombas of the world, I had designed my own Roomba oh. in 19. 19- 9899 and one of the factors that made me form eureka is what i learned and i'm still getting my goosebumps because i lost a lot by yeah. learning and my biggest experience was learning so this goes back to year 99 2000 when i was in the last years of my engineering college i had cre- developed a platform on which you can keep your big vacuum cleaners and actually it will clean your house. It will know where the chairs are. It will know where the rugs wow. are and it will adjust the suction accordingly. Oh, wow. At that point of time, the concept of startups was not there. No, the concept of yeah. funding was not there. And uh, the concept was, especially in India, if you prove to it, you build the final product, only then anything will happen. Oh, wow. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. I was told by a couple of folks that uh, big companies, they will give the work on giving me the patent about it if I do X, Y, and Z. Mm. And X, Y, and Z during that time in Indian rupees was costing me about 2 lakhs to 3 lakhs. And understand, I come from a background where I had being brought up by my grandparents. I had lost my parents at a very early age. So finance was not that much available. Yeah, you had to pay Whatever money I needed, I had to build other exhibits and work through that and then get the money of whatever I needed to. So you've been a hustler from the the get-go. You've been hustling. hustling. I was being a hustler. In fact, I was known to uh, have, uh, take more on my shoulders than I can walk the weight with. That's hilarious. So, so, but, uh, yeah. yeah, being a hustler, we got there. I could not, I didn't, um, I was given advice not to move further with that. We don't have finances. Mm-hmm. Patent will not do anything. And, and then it was, early, it was a little yeah. early for it. So, yeah. No. And then I came to US and, um, and I went to Brook, uh, Brookstone, not Brook Brothers. Way back, we had Brookstone, which had all the major 
gizmos and electronics and the latest happenings. And I saw Roombas and those were exactly my design. You're like, oh, shocks. (laughs) So that made me think, okay, as I grow up, I will create a company which will be helping the startup folks Mm -hmm. who have an idea and take that into a product. I love and it. that is what helped bond Eureka. Love it. In love terms it, love of it. my experience from an enterprise perspective, in India, I worked with Bharti Telecom. Uh, at that point of time, there was no roaming concept. So we brought roaming in India. Oh, wow. And India is a big country. So, you know, you're going to be roaming. India is a big country. So that was where I was thrust upon working with very, very uh, intelligent people who had big industry experiences yeah, and that enabled me to get to a launching pad where yeah. in about one and a half years, I learned as usually people will learn in 10 years. Wow. In terms of the development of products, in terms mm-hmm. of launching of the products, in terms of doing the communication with people. So you learned a lot. We used, yeah, We learned a lot. We learned a lot. And my famous cliche was, after I came to US for the first two years, my cliche was, I worked with more Americans in India than I worked with Americans in America. It is kind of ironic that, how that works. Because, yeah, it was... It, because... It, yeah. Yeah. And that was the reason was, when I was working with this team, this team was from Alka Lucent. So yeah. we were about 10 Indians and 50 Americans. Oh, wow. In Delhi. For two years. So that was such a big learning experience from a cultural perspective, too. Oh, it's very differently culture because, you know, and yeah. learning how Americans are fast talkers, fast movers, Indians are more agreeable. I, uh, my, somewhat. my, the way, <laughs> and that was the, one of the key differences that mm-hmm. kind of, uh, usually Indians will not say no. That's mm. our culture. Saying no is very they'll say part. They'll say no. No. But. I was in a culture where most of the folks were either U.S. return or U.K. return. Oh, and they know how to say no. (laughs) They know how to say no. And that was one of my biggest learnings during that time. What to take on your plate, what not to take on your plate, and how do you work as a team? I love it, dude. I love it. So, so, So what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? The best thing is the satisfaction that you get when you sleep at night that you're working for a cause that makes you happy. That's awesome. So on the flip side, what keeps you up at night? You know, what's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? Uh, The scariest thing is, will you cross the finish line? (laughs) It's so true. Will you cross the finish line? It can be any finish line that it is there. It is, uh, are you able to achieve your goals? Are your assumptions validated correctly? Mm -hmm. And Everything else, like people talk about the scariest factor is, will I be able to run the payroll at the end of the year or at the end of the month? Um, Whatever your situation may be. That is a after effect of meeting your goals. So So one of the key things I always tell, do not focus on the revenue, focus on your short goals and make sure you are able to achieve them. Revenue will come on its own. Love it. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? The most important thing I carry with me are the prayers. I love it. So you should always be polite and you should know where you stand and know Mm -hmm. about you and talk to it among the prayers. Love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So So that is the biggest power that we have we don't realize. And if we are doing the right meditation and we yeah. are remembering who we are and to the community, um, we should just tell ourselves what we want on a regular basis. Yeah. What makes us yeah. happy. And we should talk about it. So the biggest I tool it. I always run with me are the prayers. Love it. So people can find you over at mtap.io. They can find you on LinkedIn, of course. You're, you're pretty active over there. Anywhere else? Where else do you like to hang out online? No. Generally, I hang out on LinkedIn and yeah. on my email at rupak yeah. at amtab.io. There you go. And Rupak, it's been great to have you on. And we'll see everyone next time. Thank you, Seth. Have a good day. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, 
Please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode.